there had been an accident and I thought that it was just the phone tree in action and he was kind of just letting me know about something that happened and never thought twice that it was Taylor. So I, you know, I was like, oh, okay. And then he said, you know, uh, it was Taylor. Taylor stepped on an IED. And I got out of the car and kind of paced around. I got sick and everything. And I immediately just wanted to be by his side. And I knew that he was in Afghanistan and he had to still jump from hospital to hospital before he got to the United States. When Taylor was about ready to deploy, I just said, just come back. Like, you know, I was worried about his mental state. I didn't, you know, I didn't want him to come back any other way than how I've like, our friendship was built on. I just wanted the same person to come back. I wasn't scared for him to get hurt or anything like that. Like that never crossed my mind. I thought the hardest part of deployment would be not seeing him for six to eight months. Well, when I was in the, in the hospital, and probably once I got out of the ICU in the intensive care unit, I uh, was up on the fourth floor and then they back off, you know, on the, on the pain meds a little bit and start waking up a little bit. And uh, Danielle basically lived in that room, you know, slept on the little reclining chair that they had and then, uh, and basically would just leave, you know, to go shower at a hotel and, and come back and she was there for pretty much everything. She'd be always writing down the uh, everything the doctors said and you know, keeping a little hospital diary type thing and you hungry? Yeah. Grab myself a brownie treat. Oh, hey. A little brownie treat. It's ironic now because he literally came back missing all of his limbs, but is exactly the same person he was before he left and I don't think anything has changed because we built our relationship based on a strong foundation of a, being best friends and we still are. So we're just kind of working our way through a different life that we didn't think that we'd ever have, living at a hospital for a year and a half and such, but we'll get to our end, end point, our end goal, just the same way. We try not to look at what life was a few weeks ago and what life was now and where what he could have done before and what he can do now. We didn't try to look at the big picture. We'd set little goals along the way and if it was sitting up in bed, it was sitting up in bed and that was our goal for that week. Hanging out with our friends and just doing everything that we did before. Uh, all this has been about, you know, finding a new or a different way to do it. But but the end goal, you know, is to get back to you know, as normal as it can be and all that. So just finding uh, different ways to do it, little tricks here and there. Um, well, I definitely like driving. Um, you know, that, that brings back a huge level of independence, you know, when you can drive somewhere and, and you can walk around, you know, that's, that's a big part of the puzzle there. So um, getting basically getting that, that drive ability back. We're looking forward to taking the next step and moving on to the next thing and getting back to Iowa. Well, we found our dream piece of land. And so hopefully over Thanksgiving or Christmas, we can close on it. And then come spring when all the snow melts and everything, and we already kind of have been focusing on what we want the house to look like, we can just hit the ground and run in spring and build it. And he can retire and we can move back home and life can move on to the next phase. Mm -hmm.